In every single Fallout game in the series, you play as a different character. And despite the fact that these characters are designed to be blank slates for the player to express themselves, they are actual real people who continue to live their lives after the game is over. So here is what happened to the protagonist after the end of the game, starting with the protagonist of Fallout 1, the Vault Dweller. We know that in the canon lore, he killed the Master at the end of the game, and then was expelled from Vault 13 to avoid other people following his example and going out into the wasteland. I'm sorry, you're a hero and you have to leave. Then, wandering in the wasteland, but not going too far from his vault, he comes across a small group of people who have escaped from Vault 13, the same vault he was exiled from, indicating that the Overseer's plan had backfired. He taught them how to survive in the wasteland, and they became a tribe and moved north. Eventually, the tribe settled, and they founded the village of Arroyo. The Vault Dweller fell in love with one of the women in his tribe, named Pat. Together they have a number of children, one of them being the Village Elder, who is the mother of the protagonist of Fallout 2, the Chosen One. In any case, the Vault Dweller's wife, Pat, dies eventually. Now, according to the narrator in Fallout 2, the Vault Dweller lives out the rest of his days in Arroyo. But in the game Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, the Vault Dweller ends up leaving the village. But we're not gonna go into that today, because in an interview, Todd Howard actually said, for our purposes, neither Fallout Tactics nor Fallout Brotherhood of Steel happened. In other words, what he's saying is that Bethesda doesn't consider these works to be part of the official canon, so we're just gonna ignore them. Also, the NCR built a statue of the Vault Dweller in his memory, from which it can be seen that he is in fact male in canon. And now for the Fallout 2 protagonist, the Chosen One. After blowing up the Enclave oil rig and saving his or her village, as well as saving the residents of Vault 13, the Chosen One founded the village of New Arroyo, reuniting the people of Vault 13 with their descendants of Arroyo. The Chosen One then became the elder of the village, and that's pretty much all we know about them. Though Marcus, who was his or her companion in Fallout 2, does mention that he feels that everything worked out for them in the end. I got a feeling it turned out all right in the end. And now for the Lone Wanderer of Fallout 3. Afterward, a text written by Moira Brown, which was included in the Fallout 3 Official Game Guide Collector's Edition, talks about the legacy of the Lone Wanderer and how they changed the capital wasteland. But the information she gives out is very vague and doesn't tell us much. Plus, this text was only included in the first edition of the game guide, meaning that Bethesda probably changed their minds about it, and so the canonicity of it is questionable. So we don't really know all all that much about what happened to the Lone Wanderer, but we can probably guess, considering the fact that the last DLC to be released for Fallout 3 is Mothership Zeta, and considering the fact that he or she took control of the ship at the end, I think it's fair to assume that the Lone Wanderer is somewhere in space right now, in his or her spaceship. And now for the Courier of Fallout New Vegas. This one is a little bit unintuitive, because at the end of the fourth DLC, Lonesome Road, it doesn't exactly speak to the fate of the Courier. Courier. But the third DLC, Old World Blues, does. The Courier ends up taking over Big Mountain and ruling over it for the years to come. They do seem to leave Big Mountain sometimes, notably to go confront Ulysses in the Lonesome Road DLC, but they seem to mostly stay at Big Mountain, researching new science and introducing new technology into the wasteland. And now finally for Fallout 4. Since we know that Nuka World is the last DLC, I think it's fair to assume that the sole survivor is at the head of a pack of raiders, managing Nuka World affairs, possibly even going through the Commonwealth with his raiders and raiding settlements. Though I like to believe that the sole survivor killed all the raiders and liberated the enslaved inhabitants of Nuka World, cause after all, that's what I did. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed why not tell me in the comment section below if you want to see more of this type of video. Uh, as I made this video I replayed all the Fallout games, even though I played them before a long time ago, I replayed them to get back into the feel of it. And as I replayed them you know I got a bunch of new ideas for new videos that I might want to make in the future. So you guys tell me in the comment section below if you want to see more Fallout uh, videos, because if you do uh, I do have ideas, or otherwise if you want to see other videos for other games, maybe in this kind of style, you guys tell me if you like the style or not, it's uh, you know where I overanalyze games. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching guys, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!